Today on the 1012 Podcast, our first picks pod of the season, and I have a new co-host, Chase A. Kitty from BetMGM. Plus, we've got a guest joining us to pick all five Big 12 versus FBS matchups, two games versus FCS teams, and a new little segment we'll be starting the show off with each week this season. That's coming up on the 1012 Podcast today. This episode is brought to you by Microsoft Azure. Turn your ideas into reality with an Azure free account. Get everything you need to develop apps across cloud and hybrid environments, scale workloads, create cloud-connected mobile experiences, and so much more. Discover what you can create with popular services free for 12 months. Learn more at azure.com. That's A-Z-U-R-E dot com. And sign up for a free account to start building in the cloud today. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only had to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Welcome to the 1012, the podcast that covers all 16 teams in the Big 12 Conference. We are the flagship show of the 1012 Network. Find every show in the network at 1012network.com. And we are partners with Sports Social, Europe's biggest sports podcast network. Thank you for joining us for our first picks pod of the season. College football is here. When this episode drops, you'll be one day away from games starting. Games for the Big 12. I know, week zero, we talked about this already. Big 12 games, games that, you know, matter to us, uh, officially kick off on Thursday. We are so close. So we're dropping the picks pod a day early. Normally this will go up on Thursday, but we have so many Thursday games that we decided week one, let's get it out early. Um, for every podcast, someone's first, but for those of you who've been listening to us for a while and are used to hearing certain voices during picks pods on Thursdays. We have shaken things up again this season. Uh, our good friend Daniel Alexander, our pro picker, is off gallivanting across the globe. So he will not be here every week. He will join us for a few weeks this season. Um, I've already like earmarked when that's going to be. So he will be here some. Uh, Chris has just gotten busy with life and other things. And so we'll have him a couple weeks as well. But my, my cohort solo... Or cohort, cohorts, cohorts, co- I don't know. Great start. Uh, this season, we're doing things a little bit differently. You you should know this guy because he's been on the show many a time. But he is also someone who understands betting college football. Chase A. Kitty of BetMGM joining us now and for all season as my weekly picks co-host. Chase, welcome, sir. I am so excited to be here, Philip, uh, with you every week talking Big 12. It was a little weird hearing, you know, you do so many shows, you're used to hearing like your intro from different voices. So you're, I'm just used to hearing like Chase Kitty of the Lion's Edge. And, if, you know, if you were Lion's Edge listener, you may know Lion's Edge is now dead uh, and buried in my backyard. So uh, I kind of needed a new outlet to talk uh, betting and I'm super excited to talk big 12 and, and, you know, be a, be a voice maybe every once in a while for, for the perspective from Morgantown and, and chop it up with you every week. It's going to be awesome. Uh, you will have another project coming out soon. And, and, uh, and once that drops, feel free to plug it whenever you would like. Uh, Cause I am excited to hear. I do. It, it, maybe, maybe I'll do a couple of minutes at the end here uh, and talk about that. Yeah. It's, it's going to be awesome. Uh, I, I like this show in odd numbers a little bit. So Chase and I are going to be joined each week by a guest. Like I said, we'll have Daniel at some a few points this season. Chris will come on. Uh, we've done guest pickers in the past. You you know some of the people, we, Kelly Ford, will absolutely be on this season at least once, if not twice. And I've got a few other people that I'm very excited to get on, uh, some for the first time this year. Uh, but today's picker, he's been on the show before, but it's been a while. I'm very excited to have him because he knows the Big 12. So we're taking another Big 12 ang- angle here. We have Andrew McCleary joining us today here on the show again. Andrew, welcome back, man. 
Thank you, guys. Pleasure to be back. Uh, looking forward to the season getting started here. Um, it's always it's always a great time to pick some games with you guys. Uh, Andrew covers the Big Twelve and is a Texas and Texas Tech as well for the last word on college football. So always a pleasure to have more Big Twelve opinions here on a show that covers a six now sixteen team conference. This is our first time picking games for 16 team conference. Uh, we will not pick 16 games this week. The way this show works, because again, like I said correctly, I didn't butcher it last time. Every podcast is someone's first. Typically we pick every big 12 game of the week and then one non big 12 game of everyone's choosing. Now we don't normally pick FCS games because typically there's not betting lines for them or it's like so-and-so is favored by 38 points. And I'm like, ah, no, thank you. Um, now, this week's a little different because there are 11 Big 12 versus FCS games and only five FBS on FBS, but there are betting lines available for two of the FCS games because that's what happens when you schedule the two best FCS teams, period, and preseason number one and two is you get to have games on ESPN Prime and you get to have betting lines for those. So we're going to we're gonna pick Colorado, North Dakota State, and Oklahoma State, South Dakota State, but otherwise it's going to be FBS on FBS. Next week's going to, who next week's going to be a doozy. Next week's going to be a, a long episode uh, because I think we have 13 games versus FBS competition. So a little bit light this week, a little bit long next week. I don't care. I'm excited. College football is here. We're going to get started. Um, there is one thing before we actually get into this that I'm I'm going to do. Uh, a little bit of a uh, personal note side. Chase and his wife are pregnant for the very first time. They're going to be having kids for the first time come December. Uh, I am a father of three, uh, most of you should know. Our good friend Andrew is a father of three, soon to be four. And so Andrew, as our guest, I'm going to start each show with a little segment I like to call Parenting Advice for Chase. Andrew, what is one piece of parenting advice that Chase should be aware of before his not one but two twins show up uh, at the end of the year? Well, so what I'll what I'll tell Chase is since his first and second kids are twins, there's there is a a different shock value that's coming to him, but I, I still think it's just one big package. My my wife's cousin had twins and if you don't know anything any different, then that's all you'll ever know is just having the two. Um what I would tell you is you are about to understand the true definition of being tired. And I'm not talking like physically there is a mental exhaustion that comes with parenting that is it's very hard to describe, but just know every single parent has experienced it, goes through it almost on a daily basis. Here's the kicker. It is totally worth it, my dude. Like it is totally worth it. There's nothing like it. Um, the, the amount of work you put into parenting, the reward you get is only um magnified and you get an exponential return that your children will just never understand until their parents themselves so when you're when you're in when you're in the trenches and there are all kinds of trenches you're going to be in that first year just know it's worth it like that is that is the bottom line okay i'm fired up now <laughs> i'm ready to go it's true it's it's very true uh, I, I, I to it like, imagine when you were a kid and you didn't know what burned field lo- felt like, like people could tell you what burn felt like, but until you actually touched the hot stove, you didn't actually know like, oh, that's what that feels like. That is pretty much everything that you will experience for the, uh, all of the time while parenting, because it's always something new of like, well, I, people have told me that, but now I actually understand what that physically like feels like inside. And so it's. It is, it is just a, a wealth and a wave of new experiences, but it's a ton of fun. Um, the the low points will pass. They it, it it they never feel like it in the moment, like at all. <laughs> but they pass. They pass. And and don't, and don't feel bad if you feel like you're starting to get a handle of it, and your kids change. That's also that's also <laughs> part of the process. Yeah, that like just just when you are feeling good, like I know these kids, I know the routine. They just change. So don't, again, everybody's there. So just when you think you got a handle on it and they change and you're just like, I don't understand what happened. Welcome to the club, my man. Chase may have frozen. I think he we'll is. We'll see when he hops back in. I think he's frozen. Yes. We have, we've literally frozen him. 
with we ter- which scared we him. terrified him yeah. with with parenting parenting insight he just absolutely froze <laughs> uh okay well andrew uh, while well, chase gets back um <coughs> excuse me one piece of news i wanted to just touch on real quick before we hit to the uh to the picks uh noted that uh espn drew a very large number for their week zero game in ireland uh 4.99 million viewers for the georgia tech win over florida state uh, it was up 38 percent from the notre dame navy game uh, and up from fox's um game between northwestern and nebraska in 2022 so week zero games continuing to grow obviously you had a preseason top 10 in Florida State, and you had a close game that was an upset that's going to draw eyeballs to it and awareness. But you've got to feel excited knowing what happens and how wild and crazy of games Farmageddon typically gives us and the animosity and the ferocity and the fans and everything. For Iowa State and Kansas State fans, as I've been told, corn, wheat, and uh, potatoes go together very, very well, and I do not disagree. Um you got to feel good about that number, knowing we're going to get farm again in Ireland. And what what could very well be the best game that Ireland has seen from college football next year? I, there's no doubt about it, man. Uh, farm again for anyone who lives outside of Big Twelve country, it is truly one of those college football rivalries that everyone should experience and understand more of. Um, that it it just is a shame it hasn't gotten more national attention. This would be a great year for it. Both teams are are, you know, good enough to um, garner some national attention if they get there by the time they roll around. Um, but when you combine all of the ingredients of a farmer getting, as you just laid out, many things that both Kansas State and Iowa State are familiar with, with the the local fair there in Ireland and the passion that they are growing in that country for college football, it's going to be a tremendous scene. They're going to smash that number next year. There's no doubt about it. All right. We have Chase back. This is good. Okay. Uh-huh. We are, we are a trio again. Back, ready to go talking about potatoes. And I don't know. I came in in the middle of that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You didn't miss anything uh, too vital. Uh, okay. Well, we don't have any picks to recap from last week. Uh, and we can't recap last season because we got all new people. So let's just dive in. Let's go. We do this in chronological order, always. Uh, I'll run through the full slate, even though we're not going to pick every single game, because again, we don't typically do Big 12 versus FCS games. Uh, Season kicks off, as I mentioned, on on Thursday. At BlueNile.com, you can find endless ways to make your moments sparkle, from classic and timeless jewelry gifts to creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. And right now, you can save up to 40% on fine jewelry and 25% on engagement ring settings during the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale going on now. Go to BlueNile.com to shop the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale and save up to 40%. That's BlueNile.com. 6 p.m. God's time. I I understand you're both East Coast residents, but you're in in my show, Um, so I'll do as I wish. Uh, On ESPN Plus, UCF versus New Hampshire is the first game of the 2024 Big 12 college football season. Kansas hosting Lindenwood at 7 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. Also at 7 o'clock, our first game we're going to pick here, Colorado, the Mighty Buffs, going up against the Bisons of North Dakota State, the FBS P4 killers of the FCS. Look, uh, Bill Connolly has them like top 70 in his preseason rankings. I think they're like a spot or two ahead of Colorado. This is a, it's on ESPN. Like it's a, there's a game against an FCS team on ESPN that, that, that tells you all you need to know. This is not a typical FCS team. Like we, everyone knows who North Dakota state is like every non like diehard college football fans are like, Oh yeah, I know. I Oh yeah. Don't they like beat somebody every year? Like even general public who, who's, somewhat aware of college football knows who North Dakota state game is. So this is a big game as of now, this one about a nine and a half point favorite leaning towards Colorado uh, total in this one. And I see, this is the other problem. Okay. We had this big, long discussion before the show started that all of my usual, like go to sites for all the different lines are all messed up. Like they took them all away. 
I can't even see South Point or Circa anymore. So I'm just going to have to go off what I can go off of. Thank you, Vegas Insider. No thanks, Visa. No help whatsoever. Let me pick a state. None of us, right? I don't know. Anyways, uh, total at around, man, it's all over the place. Mostly see 60 and a halfs across the board. Uh, Andrew, as our guest this week, I'm going to let you go first, sir. What would you like? Well, I mean, I, I want an entertaining game, and I think we're going to get one. Um, Colorado has two guys on the offensive side that, you know, anyone knows, and Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter, they're two of the best players in all of college football. They are future NFL draft picks, day one draft picks. Those guys are incredible. North Dakota State does not have anybody to keep up with those guys in the open field. They just do not have the team speed for that. However... Colorado had one of the worst offensive lines in all of FBS football last year. They've portaled a brand new offensive line. They portaled in the defensive line as well, heavily, just as um, Coach Sanders did in his first year. Coach Sanders has been on the record that he loves his D-line, loves them. I mean, that's all he talks about is his D-line. We have not heard a single word about the offensive line, which is not good because he's seeing them in practice. And if they had made any substantial improvements, we would absolutely be hearing from them. Um, Breaking in a brand new offensive line against a program that has gone to the FCS semifinals or further in every year since 2011, we don't count 2020, that year does not exist in college football for various reasons. Um, (laughs) This is a program that has a winning culture that, goes beyond the coach first it was craig bowl who left for wyoming then it was chris Kleiman, who's now running kansas state matt entz just left to go coach defense at usc where they need a lot of help defensively um so i expect north dakota state to be game for this for this primetime event they're not going to be intimidated by the environment i just can't see them springing the upset though like the skill talent is just too great I think North Dakota State keeps it within the number. So I'll take North Dakota State in the nine and a half. I cannot take them on the money line, though. I do think 60 points is a lot for these two teams, um, especially if you have concerns on the O-line for one team but feel really good about a defensive line facing a team that really is not known to throw the ball over the yard. So I will take North Dakota State plus nine and a half, and I will take the under. Uh, all right, which which one do you want to go with? We hope we make one. I, I appreciate the interest on both, but which one do you want? You want the line or the uh, total? I'll take the line. Uh, give me give me the nine and a half. Uh, and I see multiple tens. I do too. Available. I'll, I'll, then I'll take. I will. So, I will move on past the hook. That'd be even better. Thank you. North Dakota State plus ten. Very good. All right, Chase. Yeah, up, I Chase. see. Oh. I see this game very similarly to Andrew does. Um, I'm skeptical that North Dakota State can pull off the outright outcome, but I think the power of North Dakota State plus those points is pretty strong. Uh, so that's that's sort of the top line summary. Uh, I, I think I'm fascinated by this game in terms of contrast of styles. I cannot remember a game, at two teams having this big of a differential between what they are and what they look like. Colorado has the flash. They have Dion. They built the team through the transfer portal. North Dakota State, zero swagger, none. I used to be an FCS reporter. I graduated from James Madison, which is like has this bizarre frenemy rivalry with with, uh, North Dakota State for many years at the FCS level. Uh, I've watched a lot of their games, okay? They just show up and play. They develop zero-star recruits from random towns in North Dakota and Minnesota, and they put dudes in the draft. Uh, They build their teams from the trenches out. They're super physical. They control the pace of the game. They've won nine national championships and beaten six FBS opponents since 2010. All the stuff you mentioned at the top, Philip. Over the same span, Colorado has one game, uh, one season where they've won six games. So it, it is just ultimate contrast of styles. Andrew talked about how North Dakota State has no chance of containing the the athletes that Colorado has on offense. It's not just Shador and Travis Hunter. That wide receiver room group in general, very deep, 
a lot of playmakers. North Dakota State's not going to see anything like it the entire rest of the season. And then to complicate that, North Dakota State's best player is probably Cole Wisniewski, the safety All-American. He's not going to play in this game. So that exacerbates the advantage that Colorado has on offense and specifically in the passing game. But I think North Dakota State has advantages on offense too, and I think that's why this total is so high. I think both offenses are going to run quite ahead of the opposing defenses. North Dakota State, they play power. uh, They go jumbo. They dominate time of possession no matter who their opponent is. Colorado is going to feed into that too because they ranked 123rd in FBS in time of possession last year. So this is a natural strength versus weakness for the North Dakota State offense. Um, They're going to wear down Colorado's taped together defensive front, which was built through the portal. I have seen this do this over and over and over again. They play fullbacks in Fargo. It's not a utility H-back. It is fullbacks on the roster. And by the time you get to the fourth quarter, I think their run game is going to have worn down Colorado and they're going to be able to kind of move the ball at will. I still can't see them getting the outright upset. This is not North Dakota State of 2018. But I do think this is going to be a competitive game. I think it's going to be a one-score game in the fourth quarter. And because of that, 10 points is really, really valuable. Uh, So give me the points with North Dakota State plus 10. Uh, For longtime listeners of Pig's Pod, we know that consensus is a curse here on the show. Um, But that was with Daniel and Chris. So now we have Chase and Guest. Maybe the curse is lifted. We'll find out because I agree. Like, I just don't think Colorado should be that big of a favorite. And and look, I do think Colorado, we talk about Travis Hunter. Like we talked about this on the show. LeJounte Weston's going to be a good wide receiver. He was a really good wide receiver at Oregon. He's going to be a good wide receiver at Colorado. Like they've got other weapons there. Now I don't know what the run game is going to look like. We'll see. Um, And I don't know that I trust that offensive line. But it's game one of the season. Colorado doesn't like the depth, lack of depth for Colorado is not going to affect them until week six and on. It's not a problem in week one. We saw what happened against TCU last year. And I know we, we have them on tape now. New OC, though, like new coordinators. They did bring in new players. Uh, they're very excited about the two pit defensive ends they brought in on the defensive line. I just, but I don't think Colorado should be that big of a favorite. Now, would it also shock me if Colorado had some like late score to, to cover? No, where it's a game where it's like, no, this has been a seven point game all game. And then something fluky happens and they get a touchdown with the last like 30 seconds and irritate everyone. Cause now they've won by 13 very much so, but we're going to roll consensus because it feels like the right side. I agree. I don't see North Dakota, North Dakota state winning this game, but I do think this should be a close game because as you, you are right, Chase, it's not 2018 North Dakota State, but the foundation, and it is a new head coach, but it's the foundation is still here. Like, again, these are, at worst, this is a P4, or I'm sorry, uh, an FBS G5 roster, like a good G5 roster. I keep saying this. If North Dakota State was in Conference USA this year, I'd pick North Dakota State to probably win the Conference USA. So, like, it's not a FCS team. It's an FCS in name only. North Dakota State. Plus 10. We we agree. So, all right. Uh, let's move on down the line. We do have one more game on Thursday. We're not picking it, but you need to be aware. 8 p.m. Central Time kickoff, ESPN Plus. Utah hosting Southern Utah. Utah in their first game as a member of the Big 12 Conference. Technically, it's Colorado's is two, but kind of also not. I don't know. All right. Next game up on our two-pick list is the lone Friday Big 12 game. We've got TCU... On the road in Stanford against their first of two ACC opponents this season, Stanford and SMU. I don't even have to. That's the, that's not even like a punchline, but like that's a joke. That's a joke. They're playing Stanford and, and SMU this season in non-conference, and they're both ACC teams. That doesn't. It's it's a word salad that doesn't make any sense. Uh, oh, all right, let's pull up the lines for this one. TCU. On the road. That game starts at uh, 9.30 p.m. Central Time on Friday on ESPN. 
wonderful. TCU right now about a nine to a nine and a half point favorite, depending upon where you shop. Uh, the total in this one around 60. I see a couple different options, but most of it's a 60 across the board. Chase, you're up first, sir. What would you like? I liked, uh, I liked the under on this. I, I mean, I, let's back up. I don't like anything in this game, and there's no way I'll be betting it. I have real money on North Dakota State. Uh, so this is a podcast only uh, bet. I liked the under at 61 and a half when I started breaking the games down Monday morning. The fact that this is down to 60 and a half kind of tells me that the market sees uh, sees this my way as well. So I'll be on, on the under 60 and a half. I think this is, you know, for, for August games, a lot of times the defenses are ahead of the offense. I think we saw some of that a little bit in week zero, particularly in that Florida State. Florida State, Georgia Tech game. I think even if there wasn't a downpour, we would have seen uh, defenses maybe a a little bit ahead in that game. Uh, I think when you look at all the starters that TCU brings back, all the starters that Stanford brings back on on the defensive side of the ball, uh, I think we can expect field goals, not touchdowns, on on maybe more drives than the average uh, market goer expects here. And with a number all the way up in the low 60s, I think that's a good enough angle for me to play the under uh, at least in terms of uh, what we're looking for here on the podcast. I like that. Um, shout out to Kyle Hunter for this little stat. Um, he is over on the Bet US College Football Show with our good friend Parker Fleming. Should have brought my water with me because now I can't breathe. I gotta talk. <coughs> I gotta get these allergies gone, man. Mm, I'm gonna get water here in a second when Andrew goes. Uh, in week zero or week one. Totals of 56 and a half or higher. The unders are two. The under is 213 and 159. Since 2019, it's 60 and 35 to the under. So totals of 56 and a half or above. You bet the unders, you're making money. I agree. Late game, I don't think Stanford's going to put up a ton. Um, late game, West Coast, first game of the season for TCU. I don't see a 60 and a half. <coughs> I just see 60s. Um, so we're both going to take a 60 because I agree with you, Chase. Like I just, I, it just, I, week ones, if you see scoring break out, it's because the defenses just aren't ready. I don't know that either offense here is one that makes me go, yeah, they're going to put up a ton of points this week. So I'm with you under 60. I'm going to stop talking. Andrew, go ahead. (laughs) I, I do, I do echo both of your sentiments on the under. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to stay away from the total only because Stanford's defense was atrocious last year. Um, They gave up almost 38 points a game. Stanford has been really, really bad since, you know, like four seasons ago, David Shaw, I think it was 2018, the last time they've gone to a bowl game. Um, You know, they brought in Troy Taylor from Sac State. I think he's the right guy for the job, but Stanford is not something, is not a program that you can just flip via the transfer portal. Um, I'm not sure if folks are aware Stanford has some pretty um, demanding academic standards that they're not really willing to fudge on a ton for the sake of any sport, much less football. Um, so it's going to take time to build that back up. But I actually, I think I like the TCU line more um, to cover. Um, you know, it's just two scores um, for them to cover. I think Josh Hoover um is a great fit for what Sonny Dykes wants to do with his offense at TCU. He had some moments last year where he, you know, you see the potential. Now what you are hoping for is that the potential shows up more. You know, he, his biggest issue last year was he was turning the ball over a lot. Every game he played in, he threw an interception. Um, So he's got to be better. And, you know, we're trying to uh, rein in someone who very much fits the gunslinger mentality. Um, So in terms of TCU's prospects for the season, that's something to watch. But against a Stanford team who was horribly, horribly leaky on defense last year against everybody they played, 
Um, I think TCU's offense has enough continuity there to be firing in week one, even if it is a sleepy environment out in Palo Alto on a Friday night. Um, I, I think it's going to be another extremely long season for Stanford. So I think TCU covers, covers pretty easily. Um, they even asked Stanford Steve on game day last week if there was any reason to entertain Stanford against TCU. And he very aggressively said no. Um, <laughs> so when when the alumni basis and you know fellow fellow professionals in the in the job are you know kind of holding their nose while watching Stanford football, I'll I'll take TCU to cover nine and a half or ten points, uh, depending on where you shop. Uh, I feel pretty good about that one too. I've got flat nines for you. Even better. So there you Even go. Better. All right. Uh, before we get to the weekend, you need to make sure that you are ready for the weekend by going to charliehustle.com and checking out all the incredible gear they have, including for all 16 Big 12 schools. They just keep dropping more stuff in their gear up for game day. They put out the hand signal tees. They got guns up for Texas Tech. They got one for Houston, Kansas State. Uh, they launched some new fleece. They've launched new letter jacket, letterman jackets. They've, I mean, it's just, I, I could sit here going over and over and over. Y'all, if you have not gone to charliehustle.com yet, you need to go do so and shop your school. They've added some more Texas schools, if that's of any interest to you. Uh, North Texas got dropped on there this week. Uh, who else was it? Rice was one of them. They've got every Big 12 school, as I mentioned. Plus, they still have the awesome Big 12 mascot team. So go to charliehustle.com. Use the promo code 101215, T-E-N-1215. Get 15% off all non-sale items. It is a great deal on great gear. It's super comfortable. And that's one of the biggest things. Is like You're going to be rowdy, jumping up and down, probably drinking. Maybe you're going to the game, maybe in the stadium. It's still hot because we're talking about September. Uh, it's going to be just sweaty. Like Y'all want to be in something comfy. These shirts are are comfy and they fit well i am a i am a the i am a dad large which is like skinny guy with a dad gut now that tends to fluctuate with in regards to how big or small it is based off whether or not i've been sick or i just drink way too much coffee and then consume way too much food uh and i'm going into college football season where we make dip every single saturday so it's going to continue to fluctuate aggressively like day to day so i need shirts that fit tall skinny but have slight gut guy which is me there's two and they're comfy so go to charliehustle.com find your school load up your cart use the promo code 10 12 15 get 15 percent off all non-sale items shout out to charlie hustle for being big supporters of the big 12 conference big supporters of this pod and this entire network charlie hustle vintage made fresh all right let's get to the saturday list of games this episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. 11 a.m. In Morgantown, West Virginia. Big noon Saturday is going to be there. Pat McAfee will probably be drunk. It's going to be a Saturday in Morgantown. West Virginia hosting preseason number eight, Penn State, and an absolutely massive game. The biggest game of the weekend for the Big 12, arguably one of the biggest games in the non-conference for the Big 12 this season. And I know West Virginia fans are psyched for this one. And look, we have Chase here. Chase is a JMU slash West Virginia guy. So I am very excited to hear what he has to say, but I have to go first here. Now, look, I have planted my flag on this show. Oh, wait, I got to get the lines for a total hour. I don't even know how to do my own show. Uh, I get too excited. At the moment, I see Penn State as about an eight to eight and a half point favorite. That has obviously dropped throughout the uh, off season. Uh, and the total in this one is at 51 and a half, pretty much across the board. All right. I have planted my flag that West Virginia is going to win this game. They are going to pull off this massive upset. It is going to happen. I'm going to read these stats real quick, and then I'm going to have to make my pick. Uh, 
James Franklin as a head coach, when favored by seven and a half points or more, is 49 and 26 against the spread. On the road, he's 14 and 5. Since 2020, Penn State is 9 and 1 against the spread as a road favorite. Penn State last year beat everybody they played except for the two best teams in their conference, which is pretty much Penn State's story every single year. We're going to beat everybody except Ohio State and Michigan. I think Penn State's probably going to win this game. <laughs> and and they're probably going to cover. Um, but I planted my flag. I staked my claim. I'm screaming country roads. And against all better judgment, because I said it and I'm going to stand by it, I will take West Virginia to cover <laughs> the eight and a half. So I will take WVU plus eight and a half against Penn State. Andrew? So you're not alone, Philip. Don't feel like you're on an island. You're not on an island, okay? I'm on Burning Couch Island. That's right. That's right. Um, so West Virginia, I, I, I hear the, the two things that West Virginia absolutely has to do in order to beat Penn State. First, Garrett Green is a, I mean, he, quintessential boomer bust guy any given week. So he's got to be, he's got to have a boom game right out of the gate. Um, if he's throwing the ball to Penn State, this one could get ugly in a hurry. Um, so he has to take care of the ball and have one of his better games. The other thing that they absolutely have to do is have a game plan for the freak that is Abdul Carter for Penn State. That dude is an absolute game wrecker. And I know West Virginia wants to line up and do a little smash mouth. Um, I would suggest, not that I'm wearing the headset, but I would suggest maybe we don't run at him if you want to try to win this game. Uh, yes, West Virginia, your three top runners are all back to include your quarterback, Garrett Green, um, who could give the defense fits with his legs. Um, but if they can't do those two things, it could get or it could get ugly often. And like West Virginia clears out of Morgantown in a hurry and the couches are safe. That said, I am waving the same exact flag Phillips has been waving. This is not where you want to have an offensive coordinator make his debut. I think Drew Aller can put up big numbers. Um, I like Drew Aller a lot, probably a lot more than most people do because he time, he tends to disappear in the biggest games. Um, so I think Penn State will be fine for the rest of the year. But this is not where you want to break in a new offensive coordinator. Very familiar with West Virginia coming over from Kansas. Um had a great system there. We saw what Jalen Daniels did under him. Um, but I, I think this place is going to be charged up. It's going to be ready to explode. Give me West Virginia, eight and a half. Lock it up. I like it. All right. Our resident West Virginia fan, Chase, what you got? Yeah, I want to talk about the game, and I want to talk about the point spread. But I, I think first I want to talk about just Penn State. Uh, and I want to talk about Penn State, West Virginia. This is an old rival. I think if you're not a West Virginia fan, you kind of you kind of casually know what's going on in Morgantown. You think, okay, they, they really don't like Pitt, Sweet Caroline. I think they've got some words for that. They really don't like those guys. Virginia Tech, not a not a not a popular uh, topic in West Virginia either. You might not know about Penn State. This is there are probably young West Virginia fans that don't know about the whole Penn state thing, but this is a regional rivalry that dates back to the mid 20th century before the eighties kind of kicked off this first era of conference realignment that put Penn state in the big 10 and put West Virginia in the big East. Everybody in this region was kind of an independent and West Virginia and Pitt and Penn state all played each other every year. And from 1959 to 1983, West Virginia and Penn State played every single year, and Penn State won every single game. From 59 to 83, man. They're not Pitt, but we do not care for Penn State in Morgantown. And there's, there's classism in it. There's economics in it. There's some weird cultural stuff going on there with, like, people in Penn State love to look down at West Virginia 
And then, you know, I don't want to get too controversial here, but like the Sandusky stuff happens in West Virginia. People are like, oh, you think we're bad down here? Like you guys, you guys might want to investigate your own uh, closet skeletons up there before you start throwing stuff down here into the mountains. So it's just, there's a weird animosity in this rivalry that hasn't been played much in the last 35 years. It's very unique. I say all that. So that people understand, you add that to what Philip talked about at the top with McAfee. I don't know if may, maybe some people don't know this. McAfee's the all-time leading scorer of West Virginia football. If you didn't know, uh, there's that. Big Noon's in town. This is going to be an all-time crowd. This crowd is going to be insane. Like probably the only thing I can think of off the top of my head in recent memory that comes to mind is LSU 2011. You probably have to go back that far for this crowd. So S tier crowd, really strong advantage. I think to, to talk about the game for a second, Penn State, I think clearly has the better roster of the two. I, I, I don't think that's debatable, but I think what Aller has shown us, Philip, you had that stat about when Penn State's at least a seven and a half point favorite. I'd love to know about when they're a nine and a half point favorite or less, because I think you can tweak that stat very easily and get a very different statistical outcome. Aller is a limited quarterback, at least based on what he has shown us so far. He struggles to go into big environments and big games and really win the ball with his arm. He's just not good at that level. The problem is we don't know that West Virginia is at that level. They're kind of a mystery, and we don't know if they're going to be this second-tier Big 12 team that's kind of in the mix but ultimately doesn't have the horses to get over the hill. Or if they're going to be a true conference contender that's that's going to be sort of a playoff whispery team. Uh, my feeling, if I'm attacking this West Virginia team, I think the run defense is what's going to be susceptible. I think Penn State needs to run the ball. That takes pressure off of Aller. The problem is, if you're West Virginia, you actually do probably have a pretty good back end where your your DBs can hold up in one on one and, and force Aller to you know to win the game with his arm, which he has struggled to do. I think West Virginia is going to play really heavy box. I think they're going to try to dominate time of possession because it's a Neil Brown team and they want to run the ball and they've got all these good running backs and Garrett Green's mobile. I am skeptical that West Virginia can get over the hump here. In week one, I don't know the last time they played a game this big. It's been several years. It's it's you know something in the Will Greer era or when they played Alabama and Atlanta to open the season or that LSU game I mentioned, it's been a while since they've had a game that felt this big. And I'm skeptical that they can get all the way there to be live in the game and win. But I do think it's going to be competitive. I don't think this is going to be a game that Penn State absolutely just blows them out and this is non-competitive and it's over halfway through the third quarter. I think Aller will keep West Virginia in this game. So I, too like the eight and a half points and we've got we've got a clean sweep there your curse theory is really going to get tested here early <laughs> I might, we might as well figure it out in week one right like is the is the consensus curse still a thing or uh or have we broken it because like it, it could be good this could be good or neil brown could you know mess around and, and make us all look look silly and uh we'll find out we'll find I'm out i'm gonna predict outside. I'm going to predict we have some differences of opinion on uh, an upcoming game very soon. I, I feel like probably. Uh, next one on the docket is, and again, we don't normally pick FBS versus FCS. However, when your team schedules the two-time defending FCS national champs in preseason number one to open the season... Vegas puts out lines for this, and we will pick it. So that, of course, is 1 p.m. kickoff. What's so weird? You have the choice of any time to kick the game off you possibly can. You pick 1 o'clock? Are you like, well, maybe the Heat will help us against a team from South Dakota State? I don't know, Gundy. I don't know what the thought process was here. You're fry your own fan base. Uh, Oklahoma State hosting South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits. Well, we've talked about, listen, if you've listened to our FCS versus Big 12 preview. We talked about this game. We talked about Colorado, North Dakota State. Go back and listen to that one. That episode was last week. It was absolutely fantastic. And you can stick around for the Ryan Nani interview because he's always fun. Uh, this one's going to be 
a heck of a game. Right now, Oklahoma State, nine and a half point favorite. Total for this one, I see somewhere between a lot of 54, 54 and a half. With that said, Andrew, you're up first, sir. What would you like? Man, Oklahoma State has a real nasty history about being sleepy early in the season. And they seem to really get like in a deep, deep slumber when the expectations are as high as they possibly can be. There is no need to overthink this if you're Oklahoma State. Turn around and hand the ball off to Ollie Gordon 30 times. That like That's it. We don't need to overcomplicate it. The O-line is good. We know the Dope Walker award-winning running back is good. Alan Bowman, please don't put this game on his shoulders. You, you want him to do game management type stuff when you're in 19th grade, still playing college football. Like you have shown to us what you are as a college quarterback. Um, yes. Uh, I think the under though is what I feel better about because there is a similar to what you talked about with Colorado, where they score a late touchdown to cover the nine and a half here. I could see that happening with Oklahoma state. They've got some pretty good players in the secondary. So if South Dakota state is down a score late driving, trying to throw the ball, you know, that, that can turn into a, a, a pick six to, um, you know, to cover that nine and a half. So I think, I think I'm, I'm going to go with the under here. I, I do think Oklahoma state's going to win the game. I think they will find a way to avoid a monumental, you know, all time stub your toe moment when, you know, the moment is here for Oklahoma state. Um, you know, this is very much a, if not now win type year for Oklahoma state. Um, so they will win. It could get ugly late, but I'll I'll take the under here. I think they are just they're not going to overthink it. They'll let Ali do his thing, and as long as they're controlling the ball, they'll just they'll be happy with a win in a in a no win situation for the Cowboys. Chase, you t- I actually uh, think this game's a lot. Wanted- yeah, no, go ahead. You're good. Never mind. Ignore me. Go. I think this game's a lot like the West Virginia Penn State game in terms of how I see it. Um, You have one team, Oklahoma State, that has a limited quarterback, and you have the other team which is going to be able to say, hey, Alan Bowman, why don't you beat us? Here's single coverage against our FCS defensive backs. Go ahead. We dare you. And I am a little skeptical that he can do that. Uh, so I, I think coming out of the gate, I was attracted to the South Dakota state plus nine and a half. And when I'm working this game up, I thought it was really interesting when you look at the North Dakota state uh, game and you look at the South Dakota state game, North Dakota state on the money line is plus three thirty to beat Colorado, South Dakota state playing a ranked FBS team is plus two ninety to win outright. So the market is actually softer on North Dakota State to beat Colorado than it is on South Dakota State to beat Oklahoma State. I thought that was pretty telling. Uh, I I like the points here, and I have actually bought a, a small plus 290 outright ticket for South Dakota State. I think that would be a devastating outcome for you know how Oklahoma State and the Big 12 is talked about. But I actually, I don't see this as a knock against the Cowboys. I just think South Dakota State's really, really good. They're really good on the line of scrimmage. They have a veteran quarterback that's running this offense. It is, you know, the way that people talked about North Dakota State in the mid-2010s, that's very close to where South Dakota State is right now. I I think that's, again, we mentioned... Bill Connolly's SP plus numbers. They ha- he has South Dakota State like number forty in all of college football. D- division FBS, FCS, Division two, NAIA. Like he lists the whole thing. They're number forty. Okay, remind remember how many FBS teams there are. There's a lot. That's this is a good team, but brings a ton back. Now they did lose quite a bit from last year. One of the reasons they were able to re- to to two p and repeat last year was they brought back like the entire team from the national championship the year before. 
But they still bring back your starting quarterback in Mark Gronowski. You bring back your running back in Amar Johnson. You bring back two of your best offensive linemen. You bring back a wide receiver in Griffin Wild. You bring back a linebacker in Adam Buck. Like I, OSU starts slow. It's just it's, and and there's no excuse this year. There's zero excuse this year to start slow. You brought you bring back everybody on offense. You're not doing the three quarterback shuffle. There's zero reason for the offense, especially to start slow this year. And I understand it's week one. Everybody starts slow even when you bring it back. But, but there's just no reason for this team to start slow. And I, I don't think it's going to be a matter of like being ill-prepared. I don't think it's going to be a matter of, well, we took them lightly. Like maybe the coaches try and go out there and vanilla play call. OSU has to win this game. And I think that like they, they're going to win this game. I'm just, I'm going to say that. But do not be shocked if South Dakota State has a lead in the third quarter. Don't be shocked if South Dakota State starts the third quarter with the ball, drives down the field, and suddenly they're up 24 to 21, right? Like, that is that is so absolutely season-opening kind of game for Oklahoma State against a really, really good FCS team. Just really good football team. Forget the fact that they're FCS. Set it aside. That's a good football team, period. I... I hate to just keep agreeing. Chase, we have not disagreed yet. <laughs> well, I did say I bought a South Dakota State money line ticket. So, I mean, you can. Yeah, I know. I I, I kind of. Uh, if okay. you want to do I'm that. Gonna, I actually think. I actually think I'm going to take the over. Um, And I think the best I get is I get 54 and a half. Okay, there are 50. I'm not using ESPN and I'm not doing DraftKings. Hard Rock's got a 53 and a half. ESPN's got a 53 and a half. Is that fair? Yeah, we go with Hard Rock. Does that count? It's your show. Make it count. Eh, yeah, this is eh. this is traditionally the uh <laughs> this is where M- Mr. Daniel comes in. I if ESPN's got a 53 and a half, I mean that's I don't I don't know if they're a major sports book, but they're a major sports brand. So, I mean, I would take the 53 and a half. All right. ESPN and Hard Rock both have 53 and a half. So, I'll, if I can legally put money on it, on that number, I'll take over 53 and a half. I, 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 I think OSU will put up points. I think South Dakota State's going to put up some points. I think, I think we're going to see some points in this game. I think Ollie's going to have his plays. I think we're going to see some adjustments in the second half. And, and I, like, I think they'll come out and hand the ball off to Ollie. And I think North Dakota state, like, it's not going to shock me when OSU goes three and out on the first drive. Cause they went handoff, handoff, handoff and South Dakota state shut it down. But I, I just like, they're going to wear down South Dakota state eventually. Cause Ollie is that good. He's going to get his touchdowns. And I do think South Dakota state with the experience they have, especially on offense is going to get some points as well against a defense that's still figuring some things out. I think this will be a little bit high, more higher scoring than we think. Like, I don't think it's going to go way over the 53 and a half, but I do think we have a situation where we get OSU at least into the like thirties, which push and maybe a, like a 35, 27 kind of game where, yes, South Dakota State covers, but OSU wins and we get an over. So I'm going to take the over, partially just because I want to be different and because I don't like this line or game and I don't I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't. Whoever scheduled this game um, should be fired immediately. Um, next on the schedule, the actual schedule, Cincinnati hosting Towson, not Townsend, Towson, at 1.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN+. Plus. Iowa State hosting North Dakota, not to be confused with any of the other Dakota schools that we've already talked about, at 2.30 p.m. on FS1 there in Ames, Iowa. Uh, Then we have a whole slew of night games. 6 p.m. ESPN Plus, Kansas State hosting UT Martin. Uh, 6 p.m. ESPN Plus, Baylor hosting Tarleton State. And then the next game we're going to pick here on the show, FS1, 6 p.m. The Willie Fritz era begins at Houston. Hosting UNLV. Kansas fans will be watching this one closely because they'll be playing UNLV later in the season. Uh, An interesting game. I'm always excited when we get our first look at a new head coach. Uh, I think Houston fans are excited for good reason about the future. Maybe not this season, but at least about the future. As of this particular moment, Houston 
about a two and a half point favorite over UNLV at home. Total around 54 and a half, pretty much a consensus across the board. Uh, Chase, you're up first, sir. What would you like? You know, I haven't bet this in real life yet, but I think I will before the week ends. Uh, UNLV in their last 13 road non-conference games is 13-0 and against the spread, which is, uh, do, do, do calculator, uh, good. So I'm going to take UNLV plus the two and a half. And uh, I kind of like the money line as well. I, I'm I'm expecting an outright win here for the Rebs. Hmm. That'd be a rough start, Fooly Fritz. Um. Man, new head coach, new coaching staff. Uh, roster looks very different. I. Uh, I don't have a good feel for this game. Because it's too hard to know what, I, what what to expect from Houston. Week ones are weird. UNLV's been eh. But I'm going to be a Houston homer and say I expect Houston to win this game. And so if I'm going to get them for under a field goal, I'll take it. I'll take Houston minus two and a half to start the Willie Fritz era off with a win. Andrew? I mean, you, you might as well try to get your Houston win in now because, like, this roster stinks. Um, like, Donovan Smith, like, I will always have a soft spot in my heart for Donovan Smith because that man came in multiple years as a Texas Tech quarterback and just worked magic in some of the biggest spots in recent memory for Texas Tech. And I hope he plays well, but he's about it in terms of what Houston's got. Willie Fritz is absolutely a home run hire for Houston. This is just not going to be the year. Like if you look at his two lane build, it took a couple of years to get that thing going. And I know Houston has famously said they fire coaches for going eight and four and they they've done it. And, you know, I, I get all of it and I, I understand what they want to do, but the build is going to take time. Um, Dana left this roster not in a great place. Uh, he just never was able to get it off the ground. So, what? Yeah, <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. I know. Um, I think this game though is just going to be one of those weird shootouts, like fifty-four and a half. I, I just UNLV put up a lot of points last year. Now they do have to replace their quarterback, um, but they've got four or five starters back on the O line. They've got some good weapons out wide. Like this just sounds like a quintessential, like it's a seven, you know, 7 PM for us East coast, um, um, you know, homers here. Uh, we, we, none of us, you know, we, we can't be as fortunate as some to, to be in God's country right now. Um, but it's an FS one game that. Like if you're just kind of looking on the bottom of the, the, you know, your, your score trackers in whatever game you're watching at 7 PM, 6 PM, wherever you may be. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, look, you know, being Houston, it's 28, 24 with eight minutes in the second quarter. Um, like there's just, there is a certain vibe coming off of this game that just like screams points to me. So I'm going to take the over, um, I really do think Houston is looking at like a two win type season this year. So, um, so if you're going to grab Houston, I'd grab them now against a mountain West team. I'll, I'll be at a, a decent one. Um, but I'm just going to take, I'm going to take the over here. One of three games against mountain West teams for the big 12 this weekend. It's a weird, it's a weird week one. Like I, I'm not complaining. It's football. I'm taking it, but it's still, it's still a weird week one. Uh, continue to run down the docket. Uh, at 6.30 p.m., ESPN Plus, Andrew's team, Texas Tech, hosting Abilene Christian. Uh, at 7 p.m., ESPN Plus, BYU versus Southern Illinois. And then our last two picks of the week and the last two Big 12 games to talk about, both with 9.30 p.m. God's Time kickoffs. On ESPN, we will start with Arizona Facing off against the already 0-1 New Mexico Lobos. Uh, this one at the moment, Arizona. A huh, uh, We got 
somewhere around 31 point favorite. There's some 31 and a half. So I see a 30. We'll see about that. Uh, total around 54 and a half. What? No, 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 no. Sorry. 58. What's up with ESPN? What are you telling me this 54 and a half? Everyone else like 58, 58 and a half. That's wonky. No, I don't trust ESPN. Oh, I'm still keeping my pick the way it is. Um, <laughs> I believe I'm up first here. I, when we do the picks pods, I have a, a collection of individuals who I like to go and peruse during the week beforehand. Now, not everyone's got all their stuff up yet. Um, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it anyways. As soon as I find, where did, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Couldn't find it. Uh, I tend to go through SP plus, uh, room 44, TSI, FEI, beta, our good friend, Parker Fleming, uh, K Ford, who I, I forgot to check his, but he's not doing, uh, them each week the way he was, but here's the deal. Just about everyone, FEI aside, is like, yeah, yeah, Arizona's going to blow out New Mexico. They're going to win this one by a lot. And I agree. I hate lines this big. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I would never in a million years in real life put a single shiny penny on a line this big. Unless I just felt like the favorite was in was just so massively overrated that the upset was right, right for the taking. The best line I can get is the 30 and a half. I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to take Arizona to cover, and I don't feel good about it, like, at all. But I, I just, I, I could look at the total, but, like, does, how much does next Mexico actually score? I, I'm just, I'm going to take Arizona to cover. I don't like it because it's too big a number, but I'm going to do it anyway. Andrew. Um. I'm not going to overthink this one. New Mexico flat out gave that game away last week, which is a shame because, you know, you bring in Bronco Mendenhall to start turning that program around. He's got a chance to do that. That would have been a great win for them, albeit against an FCS opponent. But um, I'm not going to overthink this. No Fafita, Tedero McMillan, like one of the best one-two combos in all of college football. I like I think they're going to cover the total by themselves. Um, like I like we're we're going to be approaching sixty ish points with Arizona against New Mexico. Um, I know Arizona is got a new coach, new coaching staff. I, we're going to take the two best players who just happen to both be on the offensive side of the ball. They're going to run that scoreboard up into the late Arizona desert night. So I'll take. Um, I'll take the total over. So 58 is what you were saying. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Yep. Over 58. Look, if I was the – you could make me the head coach. Be like, um, defeated a McMillan. That's the game plan. Just go execute that. Uh, Chase? So a couple of days ago, I text Philip and I say, hey, man, I'm thinking about shoehorning some, some BS production on your podcast. How about like – how about every week I do a Big 12 big bet? And he is a good person who humors me and says, yeah, man, go for it. Sounds like a great idea. So I, what can I say? I like week one, 10, 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Week one, 10, 12 network, big 12, big bet. Lock it in. New Mexico plus 31 and a half. <laughs> I love this bet. I am. I'm so fired up for the, to talk about this bet. All right. I watched every snap of the Montana State game. New Mexico should be terrible this year. And I know they gave that game away. And that's why people are happy to lay, I think, you know, four and a half touchdowns in this game because Arizona is awesome and they have a great quarterback and they have probably the best receiver in college football this year. And that connection can cover any point spread you can imagine. But I just I thought that New Mexico team played so hard and just didn't really know how to win because it's been an awful program for years. Um, Montana State's good. They're not South Dakota State, but they're pretty much right behind them. They've been to the semifinals in the FCS playoffs two or three of the last couple of years. Um, I think New Mexico, because they brought in Bronco Mendenhall, I just think I know what you're going to get with a Bronco Mendenhall team. 
super tough, smart, going to play hard. They didn't know how to win against a good FCS program. And I understand that. You have to learn how to win. They don't have to win this game. They're in a situation where they get 31 points. And if you give me a tough, well-coached team that's already played a live fire game and Arizona hasn't, and you're giving me 31 points plus the hook, I think that's a really interesting betting spot. So I, it's very counterintuitive. And I think I might be the only person I know that likes this bet. And it might go down in flames. And I would never tell you to take the money line because they have no shot to win. But 31 and a half points, I think they're going to be a live dog pretty much all year on really giant numbers like this. And, and so New Mexico is a team I'm going to bet this week. I already have bet this week. But they're also going to be a team I come back to again and again until there's a market correction or until I find out that I'm very wrong about this. I love it. That's 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 some sicko level stuff. And uh, we applaud all sicko behavior here on the 1012 Podcast and 1012 Network. All right. When it comes to towing, seeing is believing. That's why Chevy Trucks Advanced Camera Technology offers up to eight available cameras for 14 unique views. So you can focus on the view that really matters. Chevrolet, together let's drive. Learn more about Chevy Trucks at Chevy.com. Safety or driver assistance features are no substitute for the driver's responsibility to operate the vehicle in a safe manner. Read the vehicle owner's manual for important feature limitations and information. Last Big 12 game. Of course, we'll pick our non-Big 12 game in here in a second. The second 9.30 p.m. Central Time kickoff on FS1. Arizona State hosting Wyoming. Thank goodness they didn't schedule this one for Laramie because I don't know why anyone in their right mind would schedule a game in Laramie, Texas Tech. Uh, BYU later this year. Arizona State currently a six and a half point favorite against Wyoming. Total 47 and a half. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> uh, Andrew, I believe you are up, sir. What would you like? So naturally, the three of us here don't have to be told to watch any college football if it's on. For the general public, maybe this is not the one where you break in the Pac-12 after dark time frame. Maybe maybe you sit this one out if if you're feeling gassed from a full week one. Um, there's nothing that is going to be pretty about this game whatsoever. Uh, Wyoming is replacing their head coach um, who retired at the end of last season. Um, I absolutely would have taken Wyoming on the money line if this was in Laramie. I watched how weird it got last year with a weather delay against Texas Tech. The game ended, I think, close to 1 a.m. Eastern time because of it, because it went to overtime. Um, I, I, having lived in Wyoming, like, I know that play, it, something about Laramie, it's weird, but it's not. It's down in Tempe. Um, they're kicking it off late. I, help with the heat, I guess. Um, Arizona State's a bad team, too. Um, no fault of their own. Herm Edwards absolutely torpedoed that program before he left. Uh, Kenny Dillingham is, uh, he's, this is like a year one for him. Like that's how far behind they were, especially imposing the bowl ban last year, right before the season started. So none of the players could transfer, um, knowing that ahead of time. Um, so I'm going to take Arizona State against my better judgment. Um, they've got to cover about a touchdown. Um, but I do think I, I like Kenny Dillingham a lot. I think things are looking up for them. They have an absolutely brutal schedule this year. Um, this I, I do think they're going to open the season 1-0, and though. Um, some good vibes going into the year. Wyoming having to travel on the road. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not looking back. Arizona State minus six and a half. Chase. I'm definitely open to the idea that Arizona State is the right side as a contrarian favorite. I want to say this opened at seven and a half, and that's just an odd 
it's an interesting number to lay seven plus the hook with just a dreadful team with no real effective quarterback going to be among the worst power teams that we have in college football this year. Uh, but on principle, I cannot lay advantage with Arizona state. I just can't do it. So I, in a game, I will want no part of watching or betting uh, for the show. I will take Wyoming plus six and a half. The numbers SV plus is Arizona Arizona State minus six and a half. So right there. Room forty four, Arizona State minus ten point eight. FEI, Arizona State minus three point one. Um, I forgot to pull up two tissue. Um I like I I don't know what to if if forget Laramie. If Kirk Bowl was still the head coach at Wyoming, I would I don't I, Wyoming might be a favorite in this game. But with the new head coach, I have no idea what to expect from Wyoming. And that's the problem. Like, I don't have high expectations for Arizona State. I don't know what to expect for Wyoming with new head coach, first game on the road. Like, uh, that total is so low. And it's opened at 45 and a half and has been bet up to pretty much 47 and a half. I see some 48s. I I don't know anything about Wyoming. I have no idea what to do here. I I I'm legitimately concerned Arizona State's going to lose this game. Like and I also think it's their best chance for a win all season cuz I mean the rest of the schedule is Mississippi State at Texas State. The only expected true bottom feeder in the Big 12 they're going to face is BYU in the second to last week of the season. I mean they've got Cincinnati, but it's at Cincinnati. I'm not picking Arizona State. This might be Arizona State's only win outside of maybe BYU second to last week of the of the year, unless Arizona State's just way better than any of us actually expect them to be. So I'm not going to pick them at Texas State. Like I don't. I'm just okay. I I hate when this happens. I'm just going to close my eyes and point. It's just you know, podcasting as a visual medium. I'll I'll take uh, I'll take ASU just so that Chase and I don't have to agree. This we can't we can't do that. We just can't keep doing that. All right. Uh last one. Non Big Twelve. Any game that doesn't include a Big Twelve team, you're choosing. You can pick whatever one you want. Chase, you're up first, sir. What would you like? I'm gonna take Western Michigan plus twenty four and a half against Wisconsin. Uh this opened twenty four and a half. Uh and there's been some movement down to twenty three and a half. I am still seeing a twenty four and a half at, at ESPN bet. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cling on to Phillips' rule from earlier. If he can if he can bet it legally, then it's it's live to, uh, for the podcast. I just think this number. I don't know what business this Wisconsin team has laying this kind of margin, uh, and you know it's it's called a, a lot of different things. It's directional school bias. It's just this number's inflated. I think when you look at what Wisconsin did last year. Uh, in terms of playing against margins or having to lay a margin uh, in non-conference and in, in Big Ten play, projecting that forward, looking at the roster that, that Western Michigan brings into this season, 24 and a half feels a little bit heavy to me. I, I think this should maybe be a little closer to maybe like a 17 and a half or a 20 and a half, somewhere in that range. Uh, I, I want to say last year Wisconsin played Buffalo, another team from the MAC dreadful team one of the worst teams in fbs really really bad uh they won by 21 so uh, 24 and a half it, it's just it feels like a lot to me the number jumped off the page the first time i saw it and so i'm gonna i'm gonna add i've got a long list of dogs if you're keeping track at home here on uh, what i've picked and we're gonna add one more to it uh western michigan plus 24 and a half all right i like it um i have no idea I did not get a pick prepared for this, so I'm going to just pick something on the fly because I really just don't have a clue. And let's see as I scroll through here. Really? I thought Miami was supposed to be good. Miami's only a two and a half point favorite over Florida. I don't like Miami. I'm not betting on Miami. I think Florida's uh, better than a lot of people think for, for whatever it's worth. I think that's why that number is there. 
everyone gets uh, infatuated with how hard their schedule is, and it looks every bit as hard as we might think, but I do think Florida is a little bit better than than most. All right. Why is Texas A&M a fla- favorite against North, uh, Notre Dame? That uh, popped out to me as well. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Not enough to bet it yet, well, but I did think it was interesting. And, and it opened as Texas A&M minus one and a half. It's now up to Texas A&M minus three. What happened to Notre Dame that this has gone up a full point and a half in Texas A&M's favor? If I had to guess, I would I would say maybe it's just the the analytics of of one and a half. Like if you're willing to lay one and a half, I mean you're basically betting a winner at that point. So you, you just you lay the short number, and that pops it out to three. Give me Notre Dame plus three against A and M. I don't. I don't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'll, I'll take Notre Dame with. I mean, I'll take Notre Dame on the money line, flat out upset, but definitely plus three. Uh, Andrew. Um, I got two quick uh, plays. Uh, these are just more on principle, um, and they have similar thought process. So they're both totals. So we're going to bet the Illinois State-Iowa under um, because it's at 40 and a half, and I do not trust Iowa to score more than five touchdowns, and I doubt Illinois State is going to score a touchdown, um, maybe a touchdown at best. So I'm going to take the under there. And then um, the Sunday game, uh, LSU-USC, we're taking the over there. I know it's a lot of points. It's 63 and a half, 64, 64 and a half, depending on your sports book. Um, Both teams can't tackle. Um, Lincoln Riley has shown his offenses will be good. Uh, No matter who's playing quarterback, Garrett Mussmeyer at LSU, I think, can sling it a little bit, and LSU – they will always have wide receivers. I don't care how many they put in the draft. They will always have wide receivers. So uh, we're going to smash the over for that one because no one's going to play defense in that game. Just just for sicko mode, I'm giving you the Iowa under just because that also seems like the most likely outcome. <laughs> can I ask you? Can I ask here at the end uh, of the FCS Big 12 games, we we kind of like you – know, at but didn't really talk about anybody have any strong feelings on uh, any of those numbers um where i i, I can know. give them to you if you want like I, in a so, row I, so i i do like similar to what you talked about with new mexico i think north dakota at iowa state is an interesting number they're getting almost four touchdowns um iowa state a little similar to Oklahoma State in that they start seasons a little sleepy, even with FCS teams. So North Dakota is a above average FCS program. I know Iowa State has a lot coming back, but that number that, that number jumped out to me, four touchdowns. Um, I, I think Iowa State wins that one handily, but I don't think they cover the four touchdowns. It's not sleepy. It's Matt Campbell doesn't care about the non-con. <laughs> And so they don't even – they just go out there and like, we'll just run the ball. We should win by just running the ball and and go home and not show anybody what our offense is until we get to conference play. Like, I I agree, though. Like, that's a that's a good call. I, I will – Chase, I know you want to say – BYU is a 14.5 point favorite against Southern Illinois. I would take the Southern Illinois side of that one. I like both of those. Uh, I I I haven't bet UND, but Iowa State definitely struggles uh, in these FCS matches more than they should. I mean, they get they get taken to what triple overtime by uh, Northern Iowa four or five years ago, and then they played another one with Northern Iowa recently that was also I think a one score game. I love the Southern Illinois pick fourteen and a half. Kind of one of my rules for FCS FBS games is like when you start getting toward. 10 point spreads that should make you think like, mm, why is that so short? Uh, so I, I have bet Southern Illinois in real life plus the 14 and a half. I have the plus 470 money line uh, as well. A little sprinkle on top. I just thought, yeah, I thought some were interesting. I thought UCF minus 40 crazy huge number, but then you look back at what they've done against FCS teams under Malzahn, they kill, they kill FCS teams. Uh, they were minus 27 last year against Villanova won 48, 14. Minus 43 against South Carolina State in 2022, 156 to 10. Uh, Bethune Cookman, 2021, minus 45. They won 63 to 14. If you want to go all the way back to 2019, pre-Malzon, 
They were minus 47 against Florida A&M, 162 to zero. Those are all covers. Uh, it's a really big number, but if you're looking for something a little unorthodox, uh, I I would consider, here's a sentence I probably haven't said very often. I would consider laying the 40 points. <laughs> UCF is wise and does not schedule difficult non-conference FCS opponents. They go, who sucks? Great. Uh, here's uh, 500K and uh, we'll see you on Saturday. 500K and uh, some uh, passes to Disney World. Uh, yes, yes. That's, 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 how, that's how they sweeten the deal. That's smart. I mean, might as well. Of course not. I mean, I'd, I'd rather have that. Just give me that. That's more <laughs> expensive than the good grief. <laughs> Might as well just schedule the P5. All right, guys, this has been awesome. I appreciate it. This is going to be a very fun season. Andrew, thank you so much for being our first guest. Do me a favor. Where can everybody check out the work you do covering Big 12 and Texas Tech? Uh, last word on sports uh, is where where you can find all my writings. Um, on the socials, as the kids might call them, uh, X is, is where you can find me predominantly. Um, handle is CFP4 underscore us. Um, so I'm always pushing out work there, reacting to, um, plenty of college football happenings, uh, still pestering the big 12 to send me one of their big 12 coffee mugs for media days. Um, right. We are, we're still waiting. We're still looking for information. I don't understand why they're not for sale. I'm not even asking for a free one. I just want to see them for sale. Um, but those are all the places you can find me. That mug was awesome. Uh, Chase. Are you ready to plug the the new show? Yeah, let's do it. Here's the situation. Uh, I I like I like uh, perhaps perhaps some of you know this. I like to bet on sports sometimes. Uh, <laughs> turned it into a job that. Chase froze again. Oh no! Pays me money for some reason. Uh, I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. Let's let's restart. Do we restart? Uh, is this gonna? We're gonna. Should we just leave? And this is gonna be like the Matt Damon bit where you were gonna every week you're gonna plug this podcast, and every week it's never actually gonna happen. God, I hope not. <laughs> I'm. I think maybe. I think maybe the freezes are set off. Not. Uh, it's it's not a Wi-Fi issue. Just Philip coughs and the internet's. There's a. Uh, there's a small break in the space-time continuum. Well, when you cough into the series of tubes, it it disrupts the flow of of yeah. you know, the internet capabilities. I guess I'm leaving the coughs in now. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, all right, Chase. Uh, yes, the, go ahead. So I, I played the circa contests, right? I play I played Survivor here for a couple years now, and I had this idea after Lines Edge came down at the end of last calendar year. I thought. What if I play Circa Millions? And Circa Millions um, is you you play five NFL games uh, every week against the spread. It's like the sharpest professional gambling competition in the world. So five against the spread picks a week. What if I bring in five of my closest friends, like lifelong friends, high school and college and they, generally speaking, you know, different degrees of, of knowledge between them, but generally speaking, don't really know what they're doing. Uh, and I let them make the picks. So what if I take my friends who don't know how to bet on sports and I let them bet this professional competition? So that's the podcast, is, is every week I bring them on. I say, hey, guys, what do you like? And my, my thought process was basically, what if you made the ultimate fade this show podcast? And that's basically one of the angles of the content is, is like, Hey, here's a great example of what you should not bet this week. So we did a little, we're, we're doing a couple of little preseason test drives. We did our first one last week. Uh, the picks went one in four. So we're off to a great start or a terrible start, depending on how you want to define what the goals of the show are. Uh, one fun bit here from, from the Circa Millions prize structure, you know, it's, it's millions of dollars given out as, as prizes, but one of the prizes they give out is, is if you finish in dead last in the entire competition, you win a hundred thousand dollars. So we are chasing that dead last hundred thousand dollars. I have a feeling, uh, the name of the show is square bets, of course, available all in all the places you listen to podcasts. 
uh, including where you listen to the 1012 Network podcast here. So uh, that'll, that'll be cranking up here over the next few weeks. We'll have a, a fresh episode out Thursday this week looking at uh, college football lines because we have one more week until the, the NFL is, is properly underway. But then once we hit next week, it is all NFL all the time, according to my closest friends in the world, who uh, one of whom thought the 49ers won the Super Bowl uh, this past season. So that's about what we're dealing with over at Square Bets. And on that note, folks, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the games. We will be back on Monday to rehash the weekend that was and look ahead to the week that will be. Thank you again to Chase and Andrew. Talk to you later. is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.